Hello everyone and welcome back to the Washington Commanders franchise here on Madden 23. New York Giants week is finally here. It has taken us all the way to week 13 before we have an opportunity to go up against the New York football Giants. Now, they are 6-5 and five on the season, one spot ahead of us in the standings as we sit at 6-6, six and six, trying to recoup after a 54-10 loss last week against the Atlanta Falcons. And there's no better way to try to get over the offensive struggles last week than getting the ball first this week as we will receive here. Johnson going to take this one outside of the end zone and only gets out past the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Now here we go, Taylor Heineke having an opportunity to run this offense one more week. Throw underneath is going to be to Dame Brown, and that's going to be a nice reception for about eight yards. Second and two, the handoff is going to go to Antonio Gibson. He's going to break off a good run out to about the 44-yard line, 14-yard rush for him. He wouldn't see a whole lot of action today dealing with flu-like symptoms. And this is going to be a throw underneath to Dotson. And Dotson is going to have some extra yardage there after catch. Second and one. Handoff going to go to Brian Robinson. He's going to find himself some green grass. Set up a second and nine here. Taylor Heineke has time. Finds Jahan Dotson. That's going to be a big first down inside the red zone for the Washington Commanders. Just keeping this drive going. All first quarter, another handoff, and this is going to be stopped by the Giants defense. Brian Robinson trying to get there, and we're going to go for it on fourth down from the 11, and guess who is going to get the ball one more time? Brian Robinson, and why not give him the ball maybe one more time from the two-yard line, and he gets rewarded and into the end zone for the Washington Commanders touchdown, Brian Robinson. Had a huge impact on that first drive that took up the majority of the first quarter. On the other side is Saquon Barkley, one of the best running backs in the league. But Cole Holcomb says hello there. Is Take a look at what Barkley did last week. Only 66 yards on the ground for the All-Pro. From the 46-yard line, Barkley going to be across the 50 and into Commander's territory as he is finally taken down by a host of Commander's Defenders, but not before he gets inside the 30, down to about the 28-yard line. Daniel Jones now going to hand this one off again to Barkley, because why not? And that's going to be inside the 15. Another big run for Barkley here against what is normally a fairly good run defense. Now Daniel Jones going to have time to throw until he doesn't, and that's going to be Fuller with the sack coming off that weak side. And he finds Daniel Jones. Take a look at this one more time. He comes all the way around and gets past the tackle as well for the sack. And now it sets up a second and 15. And guess who does it again? Kendall Fuller sack. Back-to-back -back sacks for the first time in his NFL career. Sets up a third and 22. Daniel Jones has a man. And that's going to be caught on the back of the end zone. Richie James Jr., does the ballet toe tap, and that is a perfectly executed throw from Daniel Jones, and then a great catch by Richie James Jr. for the touchdown, and it is 7-7. Seven to seven. This is not going to be an easy game for the Commanders as this is going to be thrown out to the sideline, and that is going to be Brian Robinson with the reception. Sets up a second and one, hand the ball off again, and that's going to be a first down, but flag on the play. And that's going to be against the Commanders. Holding on the offense, Charles Leno Jr. this time. As we jump into the second quarter, second and 10 now for the Commanders from the 24-yard line. Heineke going to throw. That's a dangerous throw there. Love could have had an interception. But luckily, we got the completion. Third and four now going to go back underneath. This is going to be to Logan Thomas, the tight end. Eight of eight now is Taylor Heineke. So a much better performance this week than last. First and 10 from the 36-yard line and another dangerous pass from Heineke going back to his tight end. Some trust there between Heineke and his receivers to make those plays. 
And now we go from the 46 into Giants territory, but only for a minute before the Giants get there with the sack. Ford was there to finish off Heineke, second and 16 from the 48-yard line. Throwing this one downfield, and that was not ever going to make it. The pressure got there and hit Taylor Heineke right as he threw that ball and it was just a lame duck at that point, trying to stretch the field. Really something Heineke is not known for. Going to get a nice three and out from the commander's defense. And back come the Washington commanders on offense. But sputtering here midway through the second as Heineke is going to throw another interception. This time well within the Giants red zone. That or the commander's side of the field, I should say, threatening into the red zone. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. And Daniel Jones is going to make an acrobatic throw. And that is to guess who? Richie James Jr. Second touchdown of the game for him. Second touchdown of the half, really. We'll see what kind of damage he can do the rest of this game. 14 to 7 now for the commanders from the 29. Going to go underneath. Finds Brown again, trying to make some moves and break this one off he does not first and 10 from the 36 Heineke gonna throw again another dangerous throw there but Brown makes the reception coming back to the football as we take a look at that dangerous throw first and 10 now from the 46 yard line Heineke gonna have a clean pocket throws again and another dangerous throw from Taylor Heineke but this time Dotson just rips it out of the linebacker's hands. Smith, I believe, there on the tackle. From the 40-yard line, they're facing a third and eight. Heineke back to throw, gets hit, and that's going to be a completion into the red zone down to the 18-yard line. A threatening offensive drive here with some questionable throw decisions from Taylor Heineke, but he has a clean pocket. Going to throw underneath to Brian Robinson. That's down to about the 12, second and four now. Heineke going to have time to throw, and that's going to be hit. Jahan Dotson inside the five, down to the two-yard line. Second and goal from the three, I should say. And Heineke is going to be pressured right off that strong side and sacked by Love, setting up a third and goal from the 10-yard line. Heineke going to be back to pass. Throws, and that's going to be back to Jahan Dotson for a touchdown. Commanders getting right back into this one. 14-14 ball game as we are under a minute to play here in the first half. And it's going to be a sack for the Commanders' defense. Deron Payne gets there. And that pretty much is going to end the first half. 14-14 game. Take a look at offensive snaps. It really should be a completely different game. But two interceptions in the first half have really changed the complexion of this game. Keeping the Giants in this one. Here at the half, take a look at the Philadelphia Eagles. Taking on the Tennessee Titans. 6-5 and five for the Eagles. Going to be watching them very closely the rest of the season quite frankly it's going to be playoff or not depending on how this nfc east will shake up giants get the ball to start the second half and it's going to be richie james jr once again on the return first and 10 here for or second and 10 here for the new york giants from about the 24 yard line going to be a fake the handoff and fuller gets run over by daniel jones he had two sacks in the first half and this time daniel jones keeps it on a quarterback option run and runs over fuller unbelievable second or first and 10 from the 42 yard line all the way to the 47 yard line daniel jones using the arm here in the second half so far he finds galladay there for a nice completion into commander's territory gonna a little play action fake here gonna throw down the sideline and that's going to be caught I believe that was a catch we'll see one two looks like it maybe the left foot was up no challenge it looked clean from the gameplay second and five the blitz is going to come from the left side the screen to the right and into the end zone goes Shaquan Barkley 
Unbelievable. The blitz comes from one side and Barkley up the middle. A three and out to start the second half for the Commanders. Going to kick this one back to the Giants. And the ball is going to be on the ground, recovered by the Commanders. Butler there to pick that one up. But they will review this. And uh, it's not going to go the Commanders' way. He's going to say that he was on the ground. So the Giants are going to be throwing the ball all over the field again. This time, Kenny Galladay again with a nice reception over the middle starting to air it out here in the second half they established the run to open the pass i guess here in new york a nice throw here to galladay who gets the ball down to the one yard line and juice got mossed almost a touchdown that would have been sports center top 10 for sure but they're going to hand it off to barkley who gets into the end zone for the touchdown so the Giants starting to take control. 14 unanswered points here in the second half. Heineke going to drop back to pass here from the 19-yard line. He's going to throw deep downfield, and that ball really never had a shot. Playing from behind, not really Heineke's strong suit as he goes for Dotson again. And that is going to be a three and out. This commander's offense really not meant to be playing from behind. They have great weapons, sure. But the quarterback position has definitely been in question this season. Arm strength when you're trying to throw the ball downfield. Taylor Heineke really doesn't have it. Sam Howell kind of doesn't have it either. It's been a rough go of it. Third and 12 now for the Giants. Speaking of having a go, here goes Kenny Galladay all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. His second of, or his first of the day, excuse me, and that was just unbelievable how he was able to just get through all of those defenders as finally a positive play for the commander's offense. That's going to be Curtis Samuel into Giants territory down to about the 43. Second and 10 for the commander's throw is going to go to Brian Robinson coming out of the backfield. Very favorite target of Taylor Heineke today has been the running back, which not a problem. Throw the ball short and see if we can get some yards. 14-35 still the score here. Brian Robinson on the screen, trying to get this one upfield down to about the 19-yard line. That's going to be a third and one, and they're going to hand the ball off again to B-Rob. Just all over the field, catching it, running it, doing what the commanders need to try and get back in this ball game. Throw is going to be to Samuel, and he drops this one. I think the defender got an arm in right as the ball got there. Second and 10 from the 12. They're going to try this one again. Not sure if that was going to Brown or to Curtis Samuel, but it makes a reception down to about the three. And another goal line stop for this defense, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter here in MetLife. The question, do you go for it or not? Down this many, you got to go for it. And Taylor Heineke is going to be backing up until he can't back up anymore. A turnover on downs. And I know some of you guys are going to be in the comment section and be like, Dizo, you had circle. Well, I really didn't because the defender was there and was going to hit me either way. And we've already thrown a lame duck interception. So might as well just not. So the Commanders go ahead and get a three and out stop of the Giants. And Taylor Heineke going to throw another one down. And, well, there you go. Taylor Heineke unable to get enough underneath that. And it's going to be intercepted by the Giants as we take a look. Not sure if that was going to Logan Thomas or if it was going to Samuel. It, it didn't have arm strength to reach either of them. Trying to throw this ball underneath or at least midway through that uh, secondary is going to be the only option for these commanders quarters, uh, quarterbacks as they are going to set up a third and three now. The Giants and Daniel Jones with a rare miss there in this game overthrows Galladay. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Back to Curtis Samuel. He's going to spin out of a tackle, get some extra yardage, just trying to find the end zone here and make it a little bit more competitive. Get ourselves back into this one. 10 minutes to go here, or under 10 minutes, here in the fourth quarter. Giants get the sack. Sets up a third and 17 for Taylor Heineke. He's going to throw this one just underneath, get the completion. Thomas going to be there. 
And that'll bring us under seven minutes. Second and six from the 35-yard line. And Barkley going to be getting the ball heavily here in the fourth quarter, trying to just run this one out. Third and three. So a big run stop incoming. We'll see. Barkley going to have this one, but he's going to be dropped just a yard shy and they're going to go for it on fourth down. See if they can convert here. The pitch is going to go outside to Barkley, and that does not work. They haven't pitched or run outside all game, and it doesn't work for them there. First and ten, Heineke still in this game. Going to have a man, and that was Dotson, but just the arm strength not there. Third and ten from the 39-yard line, and down goes Taylor Heineke again. Ward back there his second sack or half sack I guess of the game Taylor Heineke on fourth and 19 throws this one intercepted again this is going to be returnable but nobody is going to be able to catch him he does a dance before he even gets into the end zone and that is going to be a pick six and in comes Howell as this is now a 42 to 14 game Howell has time, throws this one underneath, and that was a dangerous throw, but luckily Thomas was there for the reception. Howell has a clean pocket, has a man open. That's going to be Jahan Dotson down to the 47-yard line, so a nice completion there for Howell coming off the bench. Has time to throw now, throws it down the sideline, and that's going to be Curtis Samuel, and that's a huge play for Sam Howell and this offense just trying to get some things together here at the end of the game nice throw outside the numbers good to see your rookie quarterback able to make a throw like that second and five from the 21 yard line throws to the end zone that's going to be caught for a touchdown and the commanders are saying they are not done yet Dame Brown with the touchdown and it is going to be 21 points for the Commanders. First, second half touchdown of the game, unfortunately, for the Commanders. But it is 42-21 here with a minute 30 to go. And it's going to be fumbled and recovered by the Commanders. And that's Richie James. Look at the juke. Puts on the juke shoes. Love to see that. And then he's going to get absolutely plastered the ball comes out and Bostic gonna be there to recover not really sure he had both feet ever in bounds with possession of the ball but hey we're not gonna challenge that how gonna throw this one to the end zone and that's gonna be pass interference on the defense and that's gonna be pass interference on Fabian Morneau the one with the pick six in this game already from the one, they're going to just hand this ball off to Brian Robinson so he can have himself a day, a handful of touchdowns in this game for Brian Robinson, getting some extra snaps with Gibson out of the game. Third and four, time expiring here for the Giants. They're not even going to snap the ball here, and that's going to do it. That's going to end the game here back-to-back -back weeks with really some offensive struggles we scored 28 points here but we gave up 42 four interceptions and we were sacked or pressured excuse me 10 times this week that's back-to-back -back weeks of 10 plus quarterback pressures atlanta had 26 quarterback pressures again taylor with those four interceptions you just can't have those many turnovers in back-to-back -back weeks and expect to put up a winning record as we are coming down the home stretch here in the National Football League. It's going to be hard, but we're on to a bye week here. And coaches asked, hey, what are you guys doing this week? And the, the honest answer is we're going to be looking at ourselves. We got to look at the game film, identify or clarify our strengths and weaknesses. And I honestly think that is the best thing that we can do. Are we a run first team? Are we a pass first team? I definitely think we are still going to be in need of a quarterback this offseason because, quite frankly, Carson Wentz hasn't done it for us. Neither has Taylor Heineke, realistically. And uh, we'll have to see. Sam Howell most likely going to be getting a start here come the second half 
of this four game stretch we have an incredibly tight four game stretch to end the season and there you have it coach is going to be telling the media we're going to shift things over to the run for this next game against the new york giants so gibson and b rob and really jd mckissick all going to have a big time impact in this next game james smith williams though he's going to have some in uh some upgrades that we can uh, drop in there for him. We're gonna look at maybe run stopper or power rush. Let's go to power rush on that one. He's going to be nice little upgrade to awareness, power moves and speed, things we, we love to see. Second year man out of NC State. And I was talking about the playoffs earlier. Let's go ahead and take a look at the playoff picture if it were to start right now. First round bye for the Dallas Cowboys. The Giants are sitting at the five seed and the Eagles at the six seed. So there is still an opportunity for us to kind of move our way into the playoffs because we play the Giants now in week number 15 at home. We only travel one more time this season. That is to San Francisco. That could be a very, very detrimental game if we lose that one. The Browns at home and then the Cowboys at home. And that game against the Cowboys, we don't know who's going to be starting that game, if it's going to be a bloodbath or not. But the Cowboys are sitting at 11-2 already, really walking away with the NFC East. The Giants 8-5, the Eagles 7-6, we are 6-7. So if we're able to win out a few of these games we're able to take care of a few of these games the eagles lose some of those games especially if we beat the giants here in the next episode i really think we are going to have an opportunity to go ahead and maybe back our way into a wild card spot and by the way the vikings are six and seven as well so there is a good possibility that if we're able to put together a solid end of the season, that our Washington Commanders are going to be able to fight their way into a playoff spot. But we need better play from our quarterback position. We can't be trying to throw the ball far downfield with the quarterbacks we have. Maybe Carson Wentz would be able to make those throws. He made them for us earlier in the season. I don't know. Let me down. Let me know down in the comment section below. Do you guys think we should maybe go back to Carson Wentz? Should we give the ball back to Carson here later in the season to see if he can come out of this funk and bring us into the playoffs? Or do we just continue with Heineke or maybe... We give the ball to Sam Howell and see what he's able to do. I thought he played pretty well in the two possessions that he had against the Giants, but, I mean, that's all it was. It was two possessions against the Giants. But I do think forcing, or not forcing, but moving over to run first offense is going to be beneficial for us. So let me know down in the comment section below what do you guys think about the quarterback situation. It's definitely going to be a highlight of our offseason, going to be seeing what we can do there. But thank you guys all so much for hanging out. Thank you guys all so much for watching another brand new video of the Washington Commanders franchise. If you enjoyed, hit this video with a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for some more Washington Commanders content. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out. And as always, I'll catch you guys later.